Hey folks, it's Tea Tuesday. Thanks for stopping in. I'm Dave Ackley. Here is my clickbaity after a fashion uh, title card this time from Valentino Breitenberg to Daniel Dennett. Demos all the way. Clearly, Valentino Breitenberg, if you've been following along, we've been building Breitenberg vehicles, uh, uh, and Dan Dennett uh, we'll talk about at the end. So uh, let's get started and uh, check in with our friend Bivi. Sometimes everything seems to go bad at once. BV was down in the dumps after overhearing some people saying BV was just a simulation. It was the emphasis on just that really hurt, thought BV. At the same time, the Truth and Research Audit Committee at the funding agency had opened an inquisition about some of the project's Q1 deliverables. In particular, BV appeared to be able to see its own underside, which, though no doubt interesting in its way, really ought to be impossible as a matter of physics. At a committee hearing, the project director's initial denial collapsed when the data was presented, and after huddling with the lawyers, the director apologized for the misstatement, but pointed out that the Q1 milestone, strictly speaking, only required that BV react to visual input without requiring the input source to be uh, physically possible. The project ended up paying a fine equal to 79 minutes of the project's burn rate and promising physically plausible visual input in the Q2 results. And then the word came down the line, make it so. Now Seneca, the summer intern, had been trying to cheer BV up by explaining that simulation was really just a relative thing and everybody was a simulation to everybody else, really. But BV wasn't having any of it. I mean, look at me, moaned BV. My eyes, they're just drawn on, like makeup. What the heck? And Seneca said, Look, BV, maybe if you really, really wish for it and get a good long sleep, maybe you'll be more real when you wake up. And then Seneca sang the sleepy, sleepy BV song, and BV's painted on eyes didn't change at all, but BV fell fast asleep. And the designers and engineers went to work, using all kinds of BV simulations and meta simulations, and they tried this and that in hypothetic land. And when BV awoke, the world looked different, and BV felt different, bigger, somehow solider. And BV had eyes. So that's it. BV gets more hardware even if the software is not really ready to catch up to it. So, okay. Uh, uh, these were the goals uh, for today. BV super fun, mind changing demos on the T2 matrix. Damn it. Essentially failed at that. I, I gave myself a little plus minus because there was a tiny little bit of progress, but it was really very tiny. On the other hand, fun is fundamental. Had some tremendous fun this month, and I'll try to tell you about it uh, as quickly as possible. Uh, uh, all right. So here's what I want to talk about today. T minus zero and launch. This is T minus zero. This is the conclusion, officially speaking, of the T2 Matrix Brain Challenge, uh, uh, where we were trying to build a, a model not of biochemicals and atoms, but of neurons and connections and more cognitive stuff somehow. A and how did we do? Well, you know, all right. So here was the path starting last October, ending today. Uh, we, you know, Breitenberg vehicles, yeah, we definitely got those in spades. Sensory motor homunculus, well, we kind of got that. The one that we have is kind of lame, but it's not awful. Uh, stretch goals, we did not have. And overall, I feel, you know, made a lot of progress, but utterly failed at getting brain on the T2 matrix. This is the progress that we've got. And it, it's right here on the table right now. Uh, that's the key master up here and three other T2 tiles that are actually arranged in the pattern that uh, BV's brain currently deploys at. Uh, so if we get stuff running here, which we don't have yet, we might be able to see BV's brain running on this stuff. Uh, so I, I, I rebuilt the, the Ulam compiler on this thing. It, that took four hours. Uh, so we're getting there. 
bottom line, uh, we're going to go for T plus one. We're going to push back the launch officially uh, uh, and take one more month to see if we can't get BB into better shape, BB's brain into better shape, number one, and uh, to get it going on the T2 matrix or at least on some tiles. It's not If it's not the whole matrix, if we don't need it, well, so be it. Uh, uh, okay, and let's uh, let's check back in with BV before we move on. BV loved the new eyes. They were so physical. Even the bad parts of that, like when a yellow ball hit BV in the eye, that was amazing too. The connection, so physical, so real. BV tried to be cynical, like. Hey, Seneca, what does a full self-driving vehicle have to do to get a mouth around here? But Seneca was all, well, step one is to need one. And anyway, BV was still too excited to play with the eye stalks and eye boxes and irises and everything. And BV said, hey, Seneca, I need something to do with my new eyes. I want to do something. And Seneca said, well, BV, there is one job the lab really needs to get done. But it's a big, hard job. Seneca paused, and, and BV was all, what, what? And Seneca said, well, the lab needs to clear all these yellow balls off of this checkerboard. But, and BV was, I can do that. And, and, but it's not just one ball, said Seneca. It's all of them. But BV said, I can do it. I can do it. And Seneca was, I don't know. You'd have to do multiple different tasks and change your mind at the appropriate time. It's not easy. But BV was just, put me in, put me in, I can do it. And in the end, Seneca put BV on the job secretly because full yellow ball clearing was a Q4 deliverable and it would not do to have it done now. But Seneca shouldn't have worried. It did not go well. The first ball clearing was fine, since BV had been doing that for a long time. And in fact, the new no-red behavior to back out of the red zone worked well, too. But BV was very afraid of the red and spent a lot of time crawling backwards until BV could see very little red. Then, in moving into its new hunt mode, where it swings left and right to try to see what's around it, uh, it seemed to have an unerring ability to head pretty straight for the edge over and over again. And that went on for a very long time. Uh, 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 BV explored the corners and the edges, and again, never once fell into the void, but also never once found another yellow ball. There was work to do. So that's BV, and that's why we're going for T plus one. I felt like I was really close, but <laughs> BB's not doing the job very well. Okay, that's the brain launch. Uh, uh, outreach and education. <sighs> Lou Wilson, Toad Pond, and I submitted a paper in the last month called Dialogues on Natural Code. And the idea is, you know, natural code is, is what's happening here. I'm transmitting code to you right now. Uh, and it's like the idea is what if we could take all those ideas of, of programming and code and all that stuff and apply them to humans and natural language? It was a ton of fun. We sent it's a nine page essay. We sent it to uh, Onward Essays, which is a sort of a most way out component of the splash sort of meta conference these days, which I think is going to happen in October in Pasadena, something like that. And this was uh, this was uh, Lou and I on Zoom. We we got together for a bunch of time to, to hash the stuff back and forth and work it up and to make the essay itself be kind of a meta recursive in the famous Toad Pond style uh, uh, way. And, and, and we shall see. I, I really hope uh, it gets accepted. Okay, next steps. Um, Saint Step is one of the uh, OG uh, members of the community who was uh, 
compiling Ulam code in 2016. That is before the uh, T2 Tile Project video uh, YouTube channel even started. Uh, made a comment last month, uh, are the elements themselves aware of the tile boundaries? And that's a, a really good question. Could they self-center or did you have to seed it directly in the center? And, you know, so the answer was officially Ulam totally hides the the tile structure. Ulam code could detect it, I claimed, by comparing event rates across sites, but so far I just stick the thing in the middle. Well, that's a problem for getting onto the matrix because when you seed on the matrix, uh, um, the uh, <coughs> the code just plops the seed down at a random spot in the tile that you picked. So I engaged with this problem and I have a little bit to look at here. So here I plop down this tile finder, Adam, that its job is to figure out the boundaries of the tile. And it, these tiles may look a little weird because I was experimenting with different geometries. Uh, um, and so it started in this thing. It, it figures out there's the edge. It boils away everything else. And then you see it, it doesn't actually identify the entire tile. It identifies the central part of it, which is where the fast events happen, where you're four four steps away from an edge so that the event window doesn't cross the edge and you don't have to get a lock to a neighbor in order to do it. So that's what uh, BV's brain is now using. Every time we start up uh, uh, MFMS to do BV's brain, Tile Finder runs first, finds the center, and then uh, the rest of the startup sequence goes from there. Uh, uh, okay, so uh, that's the Tile Finder side quest. BV's brain, we got a ton more stuff to do. Uh, we got to get more persistent state in the brain. I mean, that the classic Breitenberg vehicle, that's the point. It doesn't have any persistent state of its own. It has complex co relationships with outside stimulus to reactions, and you can do so much with that. That's the essential Valentino Breitenberg insight. But then we go beyond that by having persistent state internally. And the grip that we talked about last time is an example of persistent internal modifiable state. Okay, and then next month, I really want plans for the rest of 2024. I've been, do <laughs> I've been doing this for a long time. I'm thinking maybe I want to take a break at least for a while. Uh, we shall see. Okay, so uh, BV clears the table running on the T2 matrix, uh, of which it currently can pocket one ball and that's it, and have, have more fun, big, big fun, big fun is fun and so forth. And finally, uh, uh, okay, um, Dan Dennett uh, is a philosopher. Uh, uh, I am not a philosopher, but uh, some of my friends are philosophers. Uh, he died a couple of weeks ago. I wrote a little 500-byte uh, comment uh, in the Fediverse uh, that I thought I would try to r recite uh, here today, uh, just as a, a re, 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 can't even say the word, just as a remembrance. Uh, um, I love Dan Dennett. Fuck that. I love Dan still. He's just dead. Dan and I overlapped at Tufts, a 1970s undergrad me. But we never met until a 1990s workshop at the Santa Fe Institute, spinning a life models and riffing on what it all might mean. He became a mentor to me, wrote a letter for my tenure. We became friends of a sort, with only rare meetings and emails and precious calls. Our last emails were in 2021. Carry on! He wrote his last words to me, and I replied, my king. Thank you, Dan. And that is it. Thanks so much for checking in. I hope to see you next time.